Got one. Yep. Little one. I got it now. Uh, Time, Joe? Yeah. Double header. I don't know, Joe. I think we caught twins. Twins? Yep. <laughs> Yeah, you got the girl, I got the boy. Right? Yep. <laughs> That's about what we've been catching a whole lot of today. A few big ones mixed in there somewhere. We'll find them. Hello, folks. Today we've got a fun show for you. We're going to be fishing for post spawn smallmouth bass on the Great Snake River. I've got my brother-in-law, Joe Land, with me. He came up from California, and he said, I want to go fishing. So we're going to be fishing post spawn smallies, and you know what that means? A whole lot of fish. We're going to get a bunch of fish. Hopefully we're going to get some big fish. And I know we're going to have a fun time with Joe. So you folks stick around. The Angler's Experience is proudly sponsored by Crestliner, leader by innovation. Tobler Marina, your one-stop boat shop. Oxart, your single source supplier. Lincoln Electric, the welding experts. Easy Loader, all boat trailers are not created equal. And Honda Marine, it's all about power. Folks, Joe and I are both running the pattern here. He's running the Sammy 100 made by Lucky Crab. And you folks keep hearing me talk about it. I got a little one on here. You keep hearing me talking about Lucky Crab, and, and I'm not sponsored by Lucky Crab. It just happens to be a bait that I really like. But the uh, pattern that we're running, he's running the Sammy 100. And what that is, is a top water bait. You use it to walk the dog with. It just skips back and forth. And it's an American shad pattern. And then I'm running this Lucky Craft. CBMR flat it's called and I'm running it in American shad pattern also and the reason why we've picked this typically when you think about smallmouth fishing you think about eating crawdads and such perch and whatnot but this particular reservoir that we're fishing it's actually the Snake River and we're centrally located on the snake right now and the reason why I picked this American shad pattern is right now we're first part of June middle part of June and the steelhead smolts are starting to make their progression down towards the ocean. And that's what these smallies are in here eating right now. And there's so many smolt in here that it's hard to get the smallies, to get the big smallies, because they've got so much real bait to choose from. But that's why we run this American shad pattern, because it simulates that steelhead smolt pattern. And that's how we're getting the strikes. We're moving away from that crawdad color, trying to simulate them, them uh, steelhead smolts. That's why we're running that guy right there. Dude. Oh, Joe's got a good one right there. Joe's got a good one there, folks. Nice fish on the grub. Show him, Joe. Yep, right in this transition where it goes from that hard rock to that loose rock. Good job, buddy.
There we go. There's a good one, guys. That Lucky Craft Sammy 100 right there in his mouth. Hey, Joe. Nice fish. Nice little smallie. Folks, we're throwing everything but the kitchen sink today. Doing whatever it takes. There's one, Joe. I got a little one. Yeah, right here. Little guy, folks. Got him on a crankbait. We're literally doing whatever it takes. We probably caught somewhere in the neighborhood a hundred of these small ones. We're just trying to find some big ones for you guys there for the television. We're working at it. We're going to figure it out. When it comes to bait selection, bait selection is probably more important than the type of line you're using, the rod and reel. What it all boils down to, do you have the right lure on the end of your line? When we started out this morning, we're post-spawn, the fish have just moved off their beds. And when we first started out, we went back into some back sloughs. We started working some soft plastics. The old tube bait's always a great bait for smallies. We worked it, we caught a few fish. And what started to happen we started picking up some steelhead smolts. And after getting about two or three of these, I thought, you know, that's probably what the big smallies are biting on. So what we did is we moved to our Lucky Craft CBMR flat in that American shad pattern, which is the closest thing that I could find to simulate those steelhead smolt. Once we started working that bait, we started picking up some smaller smallmouth. I said, okay, we've got more fish, we've got more smallmouth, we're still not getting the big ones. What we did from there, we pulled out and we started working some big bluffs adjacent to those spawning beds. I had my brother-in-law throw on the Sammy 100 in that same American shad pattern. We started working top water. Fish started getting even bigger. Then what we did is I had on another rod, I've got a rattle trap on there. And what I was doing with the rattle trap was working it off deep breaks, jigging it up off the bottom. This was enabling me to get down to 25 to 30 feet. But the whole rule to this story is, we started with plastics. We didn't catch a lot of fish. We caught a lot of smolts. Smolts, good forage for, for the smallmouth. We changed up. We changed up to that uh, steelhead pattern. We started catching big smallies. Good fish. Mm. Yeah, it's a little better than the last ones. Joe? Yep. Pretty nice. Little fish. Alright. There she goes. That's a good one, guys. This one's on a Lucky Craft crank. Let me pull that thing down there. Good fish, guys. I ain't been in that pool. Oh, man, yeah. That's a big fish, guys. When I told you that we were going to throw everything to the gate, guys, we're doing it. Tell you what, we've had a frustrating day today. 
trying to catch fish and we're catching fish and having a ball, don't get me wrong, but man, we're just getting a bunch of these small fish and I've been trying to locate these big ones. And this river bank right here, main channel is right out to my right. And this bank right here is the first bit of gravel that we've come to and it seems to be a key. Joe got that nice fish off that top water plug. A little ways further down the shoreline, I picked this guy up. He was fighting like a Mack truck. You ready, Joe? All right, buddy, hang on. Huh? Look at that one, guys. That's a pretty good one there. Look at guys right there. Get him, Joe. All right. All right. We'll see you right there, guys. That's another Lucky Craft product. That's what they call the CBMR flat. It's a excellent crankbait. We use them for walleyes and smallies and largemouth, but you can see he got right in the corner of his mouth there. It's kind of good. That's the kind of fish we've been looking for, huh, Joe? Beauty, guys. We're gonna find the big ones, fellas. We're working at it. It's just taking us a while. All right, pretty fish. Let's get that guy back. I want to take a second here and talk to you about rods and, and I get a lot of emails on what kind of rod should I use and you know really you could have hundreds of different rods to meet every occasion. You know if you're using a lot of spinner baits and crank baits you're not going to be wanting to use them, your spinning pole. And what happens with a spinning pole when you're using heavy baits like a spinner bait or a crank bait, when you throw that bait out and you start to wind, the more tension that lure creates, the more line twist you're going to get. So what I'm doing here today, I've got my brother-in-law throwing a spinning pole. He's using that Topwater Sammy 100, and he's also using some soft plastics. The spinning pole is great for light tug lures like uh, this Topwater bait, like a grub, uh, maybe some real small spinner baits like a Strike King micro spinner bait, uh, crappie spinners, that type of thing. But anytime you got a bait that's creating a lot of pull on the line, you don't want to use a spinning pole. The other thing that's coming into advantage with the spin and pull with this Sammy 100, my brother's not my brother-in-law is not the most experienced uh, fisherman out there, but he's caught a lot of fish in his time. But what's happening? We started out with a bait caster, and he just couldn't get that action right walking the dog with with the bait caster. So we put it on this spin and pull, and with this spin and pull, the positioning was a lot better for him to work the bait. So that's another key. If you're having trouble working your top water lure with your bait caster. Put it on a spinning pole, it'll work better for you. All my cranking, I do with this guy right here. This is Quantum PTXM 860. I've got it spooled up with 10 pound test. Now you can go 10, 12, 8. I find it 10 is just the middle of the road. I get good diving depth out of my lures. I get good casting out of it. I've got good strength and it doesn't take any action away from my plug. The key to it with any cranking is the rod. And what you want is a soft tip rod. This is a six foot six HMX Fenwick. It's got a real soft tip on it. It's got nice soft action. When I throw it out, when that bass strikes it, the rod loads up and sets the hook. You don't want to use a, a heavy action rod when you're doing your crank baiting. Spinner baiting, you'd want to use something a little bit heavier just because that lure is pulling a lot more and it's a lot heavier to cast. But just keep that in mind. With your spinning pole, stay away from those hard pulling lures like spinners and cranks. Throw them on that uh, bait caster, then you can crank and spinner bait all day long. Big fish, guys. Hurry, Joe. Gotcha. Folks, I switched over. We got back in this back slough here. And Joe's been having really good luck with that Sammy, so I switched back in this back slough here. Oh, man, guys. This is a toad. We gotta be careful here. This is a big fish, Joe. That big old boy just blew up on that thing. Man, he's a big one, guys. It is big. Okay, Joe, get ready, buddy. Look at that, guys. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Look at that, guys. Woo! Got that Sammy right inside of his mouth. Keeping with that steelhead smoke pattern right there. That's a beautiful fish, guys. Topwater torpedo bait there. Wow. Doing a nice. trick. Nice bass. 
Yeah. We're being persistent, guys. We probably caught 200 little ones, but we're searching out the big ones. That's the key to today's show. Be persistent. All right, buddy. Let's put you back. Thank you very much. He was right nice on one, Joe. Yeah, he's right on the edge of the Nice there. one, buddy. That one there, folks, is on that top water sammy we made by Lucky Craft. That's a good one, Joe. Oh, yeah, come around, come around, Joe. Come around. Oh, no, 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 no. All right, buddy. Slide him in here, Timmy. Got it, Joe. All right. All right, buddy. Good job. Nice fish. Well, he's been hooked before. Oh, look at that, guys. He's got a jig in his mouth. Somebody broke him off. Look at that. Look at that. Watch them hooks, Joe. See this, folks? Look at that. Somebody hooked that fish before yeah, us. Really like that. Yep. Broke him off. Joe got him on that topwater plug. We're going to take the hook out of him. Joe's going to send him back, and he's going to be healthy as can be. Get him, buddy? There you go. Good job, Joe. Nice small one. Yep, that's a good one. Fun, fun, fun. <clears throat> When you come out to catch post pond smallmouth, there's a few areas that you want to key in on. And this particular map that we're using here is not a map of the area that we're fishing, and that's just simply because they don't make a map of that area. But this is another reservoir that we fish that has a lot of the same key features of the reservoir that we're fishing here today. And what you've got here is you've got your main river channel running through the center here. And what we're keying on are these small bays right back here. There's one there, one there, and one there. There's three of them right here. And what we're doing, during the spawn, you'll find the bass all the way tucked up into the back of the bays. That's where they'll be spawning, laying the eggs in the gravel and nesting. Well, with it being the middle of June, those fish have moved off, and where we're locating them at is out towards the river channel, about midway through the bay, out to these points outside. Same way with these. So what you want to do is get yourself a map, find these bays that have good gravel, and a lot of times they'll tell you if it's gravel or rock, those are going to be your spawning bays and then start towards the back if you're not sure what part of the spawn you're in start in the very back and then work your way out and like i said we're fishing middle of june so our fish are halfway through the bay out towards the main channel that's where we're catching most of them but map is key to help you cut down all this area and find those three key spots like on this map right here That's a big smallie, guys. That's a nice one. Look at that, guys. Ooh. Oh, he has got the bait totally inhaled. Way down there. Stay on there, buddy. Oh, guys, look at that. I don't know how big this fish is, guys, but this is a good one. Oh, it's a nice one, man. That's a big one, guys. Ooh, man. That's a big smallie. Ah. Give me a joke, can't give you a joke. Oh, oh yeah! Oh, <laughs> oh guys, look at that! Look at that, guys! That rattle trap is down in that fish's mouth a mile. Look at that! Just inhaled it, guys. I think you could possibly see me holding the biggest smallmouth that I've ever caught. We're gonna check. Let's get the pliers here, guys. This is a, this is a big. Yeah, big small in it here. Where's the weight? Wait. Guys, we've been struggling all day, throwing everything in the box. We see a lot of steelhead and salmon spool coming down this river, and I switched over this rattle trap. I started working some deeper water, and that guy just inhaled it. Let's see how big this fish is. Joe's gonna measure here for us. Oh. Turn it over, Joe. Other way, there you go, buddy. Folks, that fish is 20 inches long, 20-incher, 
Let's throw him on the boga grip, guys. Get a weight on him here. Wow, that's big. <laughs> really the fish big. is four and a half pounds. Wow. Nice one, guys. Nice, small one. All right, guys, we're going to put this fish back. What a giant. Thank you, girl. Well, folks, as you can see, the moon's coming up behind us. We put Joe on a long day of bass fishing. I had him out of bed this morning at 4 o'clock, and it's about 9.30 right now. And We probably caught somewhere in the neighborhood of 200 fish. Hey, we caught a lot of fish. We had to struggle to get the big fish, and when we got them, they were good fish. Yes, we <laughs> Had a good time, Joe? Awesome time. I appreciate you coming up, buddy. Joe's my brother-in-law for you folks at home. He's uh, stationed with the United States Air Force Base down in California. He was one of my best fishing buddies, and... Uh, Duty called and he got restationed out of Spokane, but uh, he's up here visiting and we took him out on a long day of fishing. Him and I used to be good fishing buddies and we still are when he gets a chance to come up. So I hope you enjoyed the show. I know Joy pro Joe probably enjoyed the show also, so we look forward to seeing you next week. For a list of today's gear and techniques, log on to axfishing.com and select AX Journals.